Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another Destiny 2 The Final Shape guide. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to get the Kvostov 7G02. Uh, it is the returning weapon from basically D1. It was like the first weapon you ever got. Now, at first, you do get the legendary variant, but I'm also going to show you guys how to upgrade it into the exotic. First things first, you're going to have to get the legendary variant, anyways, first. It's not the greatest weapon in its legendary variant, but it's cool. It's nostalgic and it's just a lot of fun. If you guys do enjoy this one be sure to leave a like subscribe for more my friends and let's go ahead and jump straight into this first things first we're gonna have to go ahead and get the gold regional chests in all the locations we're gonna start here uh right where you i actually was just ironically standing here in the landing so we're going from left to right on the map the landing the blooming then the impasse and it's way up here on this waterfall let me go into the back here to show you where the chest is because i was already up here and then i'll jump out and show you guys exactly a little bit of a wider shot but the chest is in the back and the reason for this we need these lost encryption bits we need to get all these encryption bits in order to uh, be able to get the um the uh, Kvostov. Uh, so it's just up there right by the waterfall. Again, just kind of to the right when you spawn in at the landing. Second one is going to be kind of uh, down towards the uh, left side um, of the of the map. You can see right here where I am on the map uh, right here. Uh, so if you just spawn in, you just kind of head up straight through the left side. There's this cave. This cave actually has two entrances. I just came in one side. The other side is closer to where you actually spawn in. You probably recognize this, right? Uh, that bridge over there is where if you did the still hunt exotic mission is where you set up camp and whatnot so if you come into this cave and you just kind of drop down here you're going to be able to find the uh, next location of this golden chest the regional chest and that's going to be the second one you just kind of make your way climb up out here after that or just spawn out um, the third one's going to be over here uh, kind of towards the far end uh the kind of eastern end of uh, this area it's, there's kind of like this circular area with like a couple bridges and right down here there's this waterfall if you jump behind this waterfall you're just going to find the third uh chest in this location tucked away behind there we can move on to the blooming so the blooming uh i'm starting on top of this chest but i'm going to be jumping off show you guys exactly where it is because it's on top of this crazy tree um way up high so there's a little activity going on there this tree right here it's right by uh um, <clears throat> excuse me, right kind of to the left of where you'd spawn in the landing zone. Uh, so it's a, a massive tree. It's, it's, it's hard to miss. Again, if you look at the map location where I was. The second location I'm going to head to over here, I'm going to speed up the clip because I was a little bit lost. I was trying to do this two and one. Uh, and I looked at it like a hundred times, but uh, it's right there. It's kind of tucked away right here. So it's very, very close to the one we just got. See the tree is right, right up ahead. Uh, the third and final one in the blooming, I'm, again, I'm starting right at the chest. I apologize for that. Uh, it's right up on this cliff. And across from, from there, there's actually going to be uh, a feather if you do want to get that feather uh go ahead and pick it up uh but i'm going to show you guys this uh a little bit backwards i apologize this cave has some kind of purple light in it uh, i'm heading back to the main area right now so you can see um exactly where to go and uh whatnot so again the the tree is right to my left right there right right to my left is where the uh, big tall tree was so if you just kind of head towards sort of the location of the dark area it's right over there um and yeah so it's really close to the landing zone this one right here that cave uh the final three there's nine total is going to be in the impasse so right from the landing zone if you just kind of head over here uh right behind me was the landing zone i pretty much you know showed you guys starting from the landing zone you're going to jump down here and the chest just kind of tucked away again hopefully this is thorough enough i've seen a lot of people do the, these things and uh it's, you know you can get kind of lost so if you have any questions leave them down in the comments um, bottom left kind of corner southern area you can kind of see where i'm at right here there's a cave the lost sector is on the other side of this uh kind of structure again i'm kind of showing you this one a little bit backwards again because i was already in the cave trying to figure out where to go uh but if, if i turn around really quick you can see the lost sector symbols right there so it's just kind of it's the lost sector would be to the left you got to go kind of to the right and that's where the cave was the final one is kind of by this temple here there's actually another feather here too if you want to grab it as well um <clears throat> it's important to note you don't need these feathers i just so happen to find these feathers along the way but if we jump onto this thing and then onto the roof of this sort of like temple looking thing uh, again this is in the kind of far back you can find the third and final chest right here and we can move on to the next part which is important to do these quests to unlock these cysts so once you've obtained the encryption bits from every single one of these regional chests the next thing is we're going to have to get these other lost encryption bits from these uh cysts they're called cysts they're basically like these sort of i guess side-ish missions they're not really missions or quests Kind of hard to explain, but what we're going to want to do in order to get these cysts is we're going to be going over here to the Lost City. So we're going to go to Lost City, head to the left. We're going to be going to Micah's Conduit. 
We're going to interact with it. There's these uh, quests that you're going to unlock. Um, you're going to have to do all these conval convalescence quests first. That has to do with the microcosm uh, exotic. If you want to know how to do that, I've already made a video on my channel for that. But once you've done that, eventually you're going to unlock this quest called Alone in the Dark. Now it's going to appear up here. The reason it's not appearing for me is because I, I already currently have one. The way these quests are going to work is what you're going to have to do is go find a ghost at some location. So if you track it, it'll usually be, usually be in a lost sector and it could be, you know, Obviously, the ghost could be at multiple different places within this lost sector. So again, you just track it. Once you get to the area, you'll see kind of a general area within there. And then it'll tell you to over overthrow some kind of location. It could be the impasse, it could be the blooming, or it could be, uh, of course, the um, the landing. Now, overthrow is basically just doing these events. They look like public events. The public event icon, you're just going to go to them and uh, complete them. You know, you get... You know, kills open up regional chat or not regional chests, but just like uh, public chests rather and it's gonna eventually count towards this and so you do those uh, it's like public events of the of the pale heart essentially once this is full then it's gonna ask you to basically do uh this kind of uh quest and uh whatnot you're gonna be able to go into these cysts and that's how you're gonna basically unlock these cysts is by doing the alone in the dark quest and you're gonna have to do multiple one of these so at first they're gonna give you uh three different weapons eventually it's just gonna be giving you a random weapon to choose from uh after that with a chance at deep sight weapons and all that good stuff. So if we go to the map, for example, you can see that I've unlocked some of these cysts. So there's going to be three locations. There's going to be two that are going to be located here. There's six total. So there's going to be Slayer and I believe, um, I forget what the other one is, but there's going to be two down there. Over here by the landing, there's going to be the Sword one and the Moth Infested Cavern. Uh, and then over to the right on the Impasse, there's going to be Smothering Darkness and there's going to be uh, the third one, which again, I'm, I'm forgetting at the time of recording this. Um, now, once you've unlocked all six, if you want to rotate between the two, I'll show you guys how to do that. Uh, there's a certain location that you can switch between the two because again, there's going to be two here that you can rotate between two and then there's going to be two up here uh which is going to be four and then down here which is going to be six okay so let me go to each location and show you guys that really quick so for the landing, if you go kind of uh, just literally straight once you spawn into the landing zone, uh, you're going to go all, all the way up here, and there's uh, this bird right here. If you go up to the bird, you can activate the cyst sword dance, and if you already have sword dance activated, then you're going to go over to uh, this location here. The bird's going to be sitting here to activate the moth cavern, and then you just kinda, you're just kind of just going to kind of like follow the bird uh, through here, and it'll lead you to basically where you need to go. Again, these are going to be the first two uh, birds, and we're going to have to go into each uh, one of these uh, cyst locations. Location. So I'm gonna have to show you guys in a minute, but first I wanted to explain this part because it's very important Let me show you the two locations for the blooming so for the blooming if you basically head left once you uh, spawn in I'll show you guys exactly where I am on the map here So uh, you're basically just gonna be going directly south to the bottom right corner um, What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna go over to this log over here You can see there's a bunch of enemies This is kind of where everything's dead the dead area where the big open kind of area is where we had to do uh, Something within the campaign you're gonna go here to activate the cyst searing light um, And then the bird will be on the left side of this tree trunk to, to activate the other cyst which um, I'm drawing a blank on what this cyst is actually called uh, Slayer. So this is going to be Searing Light and Slayer. Those are going to be the other two. And then we're going to go to the Impasse and I'll show you guys how to swap between these other two. So for the Impasse, if you just kind of go to the uh, east and over here, this is basically where the big kind of temple looking thing is. There's one there and we just cross this little chasm. And on this side here is where you're going to find the bird. Now again, these birds are not going to be there unless you've, act you've already unlocked all these cysts, by the way. So this is going to be Aerial Ace and then Smothering Darkness will be right here. Um, and again, this is just if you want to alternate between the two okay but what you have to do in order to first unlock them is just complete the alone in the dark quest now the alone in the dark quest um you have to have to do at least a minimum of six of those to unlock all six cysts now from my experience i actually had to do a few more than those because they're very random at least they were for me um maybe they're different for you but for me they were random and i had to keep doing the alone in the dark quest until i've unlocked all six cysts okay so that's how you unlock the cysts i want to explain that and that's how you also alternate between the two cysts if for some reason you know maybe you uh didn't get to go into one or maybe you've already done the cysts and you need to go back into them and you're wondering how do i go back into them if i've already done them but i didn't get the encryption bits well that's how you uh, kind of switch between the two so that's why this segment of the video was very important to explain even though it was a little bit lengthy so now i can show you each encryption bit location in all six of the cysts let's do that right now 
All right, so for the first one, it's going to be Sword Dance. It's going to be going from the cyst from the left to the right. Once you get to the, like, the landing, the blooming, then the impasse, once you get to this location here, you're just going to head straight down to this uh, area uh, over here. It's, like, maybe, like, a third through the uh, mission. Uh, you are going to need a sword, though, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab a sword. There's a sword right at the top of where I initially jumped down, and I can show you a second time where I'm coming from in case you didn't get a good view uh, of this room the first time. Because I know sometimes it can get a little bit confusing. Where are you going? Uh, you know, so anyways, we're going to destroy this uh, gunk. And right behind is like this little machine. We're going to go ahead and interact with it to get the first lost encryption bit. This one's going to be the moth uh, infested cavern or whatever it's called. Right at the very beginning, we're just going to drop straight down, go into this little cave. And we're just going to grab the uh, encryption bit. It's very, very easy to find. Uh, we're going to move on. Searing, uh, what is called Searing Light Cyst. Once we've completed this um, this actual boss fight and all that, it's going to lock all the doors. You're looking for the cave that has purple light emanating from it. You're going to go inside. You're going to head to the left. Again, you're going to interact with this kind of you know robotic thing that's fallen. I don't know if it's a Vex or what. And pick up the Searing, uh, sorry, the Lost Encryption bit. Uh, this one here is going to be uh, the next one, which is going to be a Slayer. And again, we're going to be looking for this cave that has the uh, trees in it. It's the exact same uh, room as the last one. It's just a different uh, cyst. So the boss fight is going to be different. Mechanics a little different. Uh, this one's going to be the aerial cyst. Again, you're going to have to complete the actual encounter to unlock this. But you're looking for this kind of cave-like uh, area here that has a bunch of lava in it with like these kind of purple rocks. You're going to make your way through here. Uh, and once you get through here, you're looking for a little kind of a cutaway cave right here. It's a little tiny cave to the right uh, as you're moving on through. Again, you're going to go ahead, pick up the lost encryption bit, and that's going to be, again, the aerial ace cyst. The uh, final one we're going to be going to is the smothering darkness cyst. Again, it's going to be the same room uh, or same boss area, not the same room as the uh, previous cyst, but we're looking for this cave here. So you can see there was kind of like a rectangular slanted purple kind of crystal thing hanging from the wall. That's what you're looking for. And that's the cave you're going to go through. When you go through it, you're going to head over to the right over here and you're going to pick up the last lost encryption bit. And that's it. We, we should have the purple one. You should be done and we can go claim our uh, our, our weapon, which I'm going to show you guys exactly where to go uh, right now. We're actually going to go tele not teleport, but uh, travel, fast travel to the impasse. And from the impasse, I'll show you guys where to get this uh, this weapon. Because again, you actually have to go claim it uh, from a special chest, which you may or may not have encountered already. If you've already seen the chest, then great. You know exactly where it is. But if not, I'll show you guys the exact location. I'm not going to speed up the clip because some people might get lost when I, if I do that. So I'm going to leave it like that. That said, I will take this time to say if you guys found this useful, please do consider leaving a like. Uh, if you didn't uh, enjoy it or find it useful, let me know what you dislike so I can improve the content in the future. And uh, be sure to uh, let me know uh, if you have any questions. So this is the chest right here. We're just going to walk up to. We're going to be able to unlock it now that we have all the encryption bits. And uh, we're going to be getting the, uh, the weapon, the Kvostov 7G02. So now that we have the purple legendary cost off, how do we get it to be exotic? Well, we have to find all of these traveler uh, kind of things. They're, they're like traveler moats or hidden traveler things around the world. So I'm going to show you guys all the locations here right now. Going in from the lost city, again, this is going to be in the pale heart uh, right over here. We're going to spawn in here. Going from here, uh, I'm not going to cut any of the pathways or speed it up because I don't want to get you guys lost or confused. So do feel free to put this to 2.0 speed or skim ahead or whatever. But I know there's going to be some people that want uh, to see the entire pathway. So I want to show you guys the entire pathway. And that's why I'm also recording this section as a live comm rather than just kind of like an overdub of edited gameplay. Once we get over here, uh, we're going to be heading over to the right. See, there's a red platform. There's all these different platforms around. There's this one over here specifically uh, that is red. So we're going to go ahead and uh, continue down this way. And if you, we go straight down here, I'm just going to use my uh, strand grapple to go a little bit quicker. You can actually maybe already see it glowing there. It's just straight ahead of me right here in the waterfall that's glowing. So go ahead, collect that. That's going to be the first one. It's actually my third one, but I'll show you guys where the other locations are as well. And there's also going to be dialogue with it. So be sure to enjoy that. All right, so for the next one, we're going to go to the landing landing zone. And we're going to head directly to the left as soon as we land. And it's just right here uh, by the waterfall. They all seem to be by waterfall. So go ahead, collect that one, and we can move on to the next one. 
All right, so for the next one, we're going to be heading kind of towards the middle path between the blooming and the landing. Um, and what we're going to be doing is kind of going into sort of, I guess, the not the refraction down here, but sort of like this kind of area here. So one way to get there is from this side right here. Uh, and we're just going to basically essentially head all the way through here to get to the other side until we spot a, a shrieker. Uh, the other way to get there, let me uh, head over there right now. Is to go down from the blooming all the way to the path down here uh and we're basically gonna have this kind of purple cave and this is again from the other side uh not 100 percent sure which one is going to be a little bit quicker it might be this way um it might be the other way i'm going this way because i believe it, it'll probably be quicker um <clears throat> again we're kind of going through the refraction and you got sort of like this cavern area right here uh, that you're going to end up getting to. But we're not going to be going here. Uh, we're going to be heading all the way through. If I don't die, that is, of course. And I died. Okay, no, I didn't die. I, fe I fell all the way to the bottom. I did not die. So if you do fall down to the bottom, just kind of make your way out here. Again, I do believe that this is the quickest way. Basically, where you're going to end up coming out of is this cave right here. And this is sort of kind of into the direction that we want to be going to but we want to go across here so you want to go over here so if we do make our uh, way all the way around again i apologize i keep dying uh i am a noob but um you know you can't pull out your sparrow in this area the reason i'm showing you guys this route instead is because i feel like it's a little bit less confusing because if you come from the side of the landing there's a lot of kind of purple crystal areas that look very similar and could uh you know it could it could in theory get confusing for some people so I'm trying to make the least confusing routes. And again, this is either similar in terms of, you know, distance or if not, if not similar at the very least, um, you know, might be shorter. So we're going to go to these ledges here. So that's the thing. If you would have came from the other side, you'd be coming out from up there. See that crystal room? You'd be coming out from up there and you're going to be dropping down here to this ledge. Uh, you're going to see sort of like uh, this shrieker and basically underneath the shrieker down here, there's another waterfall. And in the back of the waterfall, we're going to find the vision of the traveler. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. All right, my friends, so for the next one, we're going to be going over to the blooming and we're going to go to the kind of bottom right area of the blooming here. There's going to be this big tree. I already actually got it, so it's not going to be showing up right on this little ledge where I'm standing, by the way. There's going to be a feather. If you climb up kind of like this ledge here, you can get up to that tree. Uh, there's a big tree over there. The landing spot for the blooming is like over there ish. Uh, you're coming to the kind of dead area. Uh, and again, you can kind of start from there or you can just climb the tree from the bottom here and you're going to make your way up and it should be right on the kind of end of this branch right like right here. So go ahead, pick this one up and we can move on to the next location. So jumping off that tree that we just came from, uh, we're going to go to the bird here. We're going to make sure that we have the cyst activated for searing light, which again, you should uh, already have all of the cysts. And uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go into that location. So basically what we're going to be doing is basically following the bird to get into this uh, into this cyst. So if you don't know where to go, um, again, the bird should show you the way to get there. Uh, if the bird is not there, just kind of follow my path. You're just going to basically kind of be kind of going down here in the seclusion area. And it's going to uh, bring you all the way over to Zavala's house, which again, I'll show you. I'll show you most of the path uh, at the very least so you guys can see. Uh, where to go when you get kind of down here see the bird is kind of chilling out right there uh, the bird's going to go fly this way into the portal you're going to go into the portal uh, and you're going to go down to Zavala's house at this point it's going to make you go over to this section over here uh, you can see the bird just kind of hanging out right there it's going to bring you straight kind of uh, back um, sort of uh, to the back of this uh, area under behind the waterfall. And back here is where you're gonna go ahead uh, and enter this uh, this cyst. You see you gotta put in the combination. So let me go ahead and do that. And once I'm inside, I will uh, show you guys where to uh, get the, uh, the vision of the traveler. All right, so we've uh, opened up the, um, the little combination lock there. And I'm just gonna clear out these ads really quick. Uh, once we go kind of head inside here, Again, there's a bunch of ads, kind of like a tight little cavern. We're going to turn up right here by this tree. We're going to turn backwards and we're going to kind of climb up here and it's just kind of tucked away in the back here. So go ahead, pick it up. And that's going to be the next one uh, obtained. 
So for this next one, we got to get to the snowy region, and there's a couple ways to get there. Uh, we can go through the impasse, and we basically kind of go down, and we got to go through. There's like a door somewhere uh, down here, and it you know, brings you up. Uh, or since we're already here, uh, this is where we came from over there. We're going to exit that cyst. We're going to come on the op opposite side of the Zavala house area, and we're just going to kind of make our way through this cavern. I'm, I'm not going to show you guys everything of this path because it's pretty much straightforward. So maybe I'll speed up the gameplay or something, or you just, you know, just again follow the path all the way back it's pretty much a singular path until you get to the snowy area and then from there i'll show you guys where to go okay so you can see now that we're uh, exiting kind of the uh, snowy region right here uh, we can kind of uh, make our way backwards and if we keep going straight here we're going to end up um, going to this kind of path here it's going to lead us up the mountain and all we're going to want to do is continue to climb the mountain essentially so we're going to keep climbing the mountain all the way uh, until we get to the location where I'll show you guys in just uh, a brief moment. Uh, it, again, this is a pretty linear path. Maybe, you know, you might get a little bit confused at times, but uh, if you've played the campaign uh, or anything, uh, you should you should have a general idea of, uh, of where to go. Again, we're just going to kind of go make our way straight across here uh, and just kind of uh, chip our way, making our way slowly up this very, uh, very tall uh, mountain again. I'll maybe I'll just kind of speed up this clip for the sake of time uh, And so I don't just ramble through the whole thing and make this video an hour long again I'm trying to be thorough and consistent and show as many people as possible uh, as much help as possible, right? Some people might need a little bit more help than others So just you know bear that in mind with this extra footage being shown Okay, so once you get to this location right here, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see like kind of like antennas and, and whatnot. Uh, there's going to be this satellite in the far back and right between this box and satellite, you can find the next Traveler's Vision. Go ahead and pick it up and that is going to be the next one down. So the next one is very, very easy. We're going to go to the impasse right here. Uh, the uh, impasse spawn location was right there by that tree. We're just going to come over here to the like this temple looking thing. Um, and I've already grabbed this one. But if we jump up right up here, there's kind of the circular thing. The traveler thing is going to be right in the middle of this. So just grab it, pick it up, and we're pretty much good to go for the next one. So for the next one, we're going to actually have to go exactly from where we are over here, but we're going to be heading to the left across this big, gigantic um, chasm, whatever you want to call it. We're going to be going uh, all the way over here, and this one is a little bit long of a path, so again, I feel like maybe I should speed it up, but at the same time, this area gets very, very confusing, so please do bear with me on the length of this video. Um, you know, maybe you're someone who can easily track and follow these things, but I know there are people out there, I know myself included, that, you know, sometimes I watch people's guides and they they're so quick with the cuts and this and speeding it up that sometimes it gets uh, a little bit uh confusing so um i don't want to confuse anybody and so for the sake of not confusing anybody and i might get myself get confused at this section if uh if i if i remember where to go um just just bear with me um and we'll we'll, we'll get there together okay we'll get there together so we're, there's a couple different areas that we have to uh go uh into um, and go through rather and at one point you're gonna get to um, sort of this area right here uh, when you do get to this area right here we're gonna kind of continue up uh, just over here and uh, head where all these kind of freaky hands are um, so just kind of follow this path right here you should get to this kind of area right here where it starts to get stormy and uh, whatnot just kind of like um, uh, sandstorm I guess uh, if you will and uh, we're just going to kind of head through here and eventually, you know, just ignore the enemies or or kill them if you want to. You do whatever you want, uh, obviously. Um, once we get through here, we're going to see this section here with all these kind of freaky hands again and, and statues and uh, whatnot. It's, it's really eerie. I, I kind of love what they did with this whole uh, sort of... Uh, uh, area and aesthetic they they really kind of lead into the the you know the unsettlingness I guess if you will of uh, Of the witness so once we get to this section here, we're gonna head to the right. We're gonna go through here um, Right over here and just kind of down 
uh, down this path right here again. It's going to be stormy again once we uh, once we get out here. So do uh, do bear that in uh, in mind. So no, sorry, it is not behind that tree. We're actually going to be going straight through these uh, two pillars, and it's on the other side. This tree right here, you can actually see there's a, a red kind of strip light right here, and right behind it, you're going to find the final uh, traveler's visions. Go ahead, pick it up, and listen to the dialogue if you'd like to, and we can continue on with this guide. So once you've collected all eight modes, we're going to go back to the Lost City. And when we get to the Lost City, we're going to head to the left over here. Uh, we're basically going back to the area where we first kind of started when we uh, were doing the campaign, when we first got into the Pale Heart. Uh, or if you've played Destiny 1, it's going to be basically where the uh, the speaker was. I guess the beginning of Destiny 2 as well, technically, right? Uh, until... All that happened. <laughs> Anyways, when we get back to this area here, you're going to see there's eight pedestals. You're probably already figuring out what to do here. We're going to go to each one. We're going to be uh, placing the vision of the traveler on each of these uh, pedestals um, one by one. Uh, this is not it, by the way. There's another section that we're going to have to explain in a second. So you might be tempted at this point to click off the video. But uh, again, we're not quite done. It will spawn a golden chest. That is true. And if for some reason you have enough motes of light that you can open the chest, then great. I guess we're done. You, you can move on from this. But if it's not, if it says you lack something like it is for me, let me explain this. I have 16 motes. We need, uh, I believe it's 17. So there's the eight that we got from the travel visions of the traveler. And then there's, of course, going to be the... Um, uh, there's going to be nine additional ones, I believe it is, uh, from completing three different bosses. So there's three different areas in the map, right? We have the landing. We, of course, we also have the blooming. And then we have the uh, the impasse, right? Uh, there's going to be three bosses in each of these locations from these events called overthrows. For example, you can see there's an overthrow in progress over here. Uh, and it, actually, if you go to the bigger kind of icon here, you can uh, matchmake. If you want to actually matchmake with people that are focusing on doing these overthrows, you can see there's actually another one uh, in progress over here uh, at the landing basically you're just going to do these things that look like uh, public event icons and uh it's going to increase the tier uh you're going to look for those around those areas and it's going to increase the tier in that area if you actually go to the pale heart triumphs here uh, you can actually see, uh, if you give me actually just a second, let me uh, let me quickly find it here. Okay, so yeah, so you can see basically that there's three triumphs on screen. Uh, there's uh, the impasse, there's the landing, and there's the blooming, the three bosses. So you can see how many of the bosses you've done and, and if you've, uh, uh, you know, which bosses specifically you haven't done. Uh, so that's going to be very, very helpful for you uh, as well. Uh, again, at the time of recording this, this is actually bugged. You can see that I'm, I've done all nine, and yet I can't open the chest uh, at this exact moment because this quest line is, is a little bit bugged. Bungie's working on a fix, so for some reason it's bugged. By the time you see this video, it should not be bugged, uh, but if it is, just keep that in mind. Uh, that is something that Bungie is aware of, but... Um, yeah, that's just uh, an unfortunate thing with, with this. So, again, you're just going to do the overthrows, and you're going to increase them, and that's going to be pretty much that. You're just going to basically get all three bosses uh, done one by one. I guess there might be a little bit RNG on, on which bosses spawn and in which order. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but just keep doing the overthrows in each location until you've done all the bosses in each location, and opening up the final chest of said boss will give you one of these uh, motes of light. And uh, once you have the 17, you can go ahead and open that golden chest. All right. So a quick update before we actually grab the exotic Kvostov. Uh, basically, this is now the 12th, the 11th uh, reset uh, of, of June, June 11th uh, reset when Season of the Echoes has come out. And basically what happened is I went over to the blooming area and the big meatball boss that was bugged is back. So Destiny um, uh, has that, Bungie put the, the boss back into the game and it didn't drop the moat for me. But when I left the Pale Heart, randomly uh, in my inventory, it converted uh, my moats um, into the moat of pr uh, primordial, if that's how you pronounce it, light. So it it, it converted the uh, the legendary purple moats into the exotic moat. Uh, again, I didn't pick it up. It was I, I beat the meatball uh, in the blooming uh, that boss fight that was bugged before, uh, and then I just left the pale heart because it didn't it didn't give it me uh, the moat out of the chest and then it just randomly turned into that so try that if it's still bugged for you guys bungie didn't say it was fixed but yet that is what happened after reset so once you do have that exotic um 
moat that has uh, been converted from the 18, I think it was, of the uh, legendary moats I said in the last part segment of this video. It should turn into this exotic one. And once it has, you can go to this chest, which is where the speaker used to be as we were in the last segment. You can walk up to the chest. Uh, it might be finicky. You have to might, you know, go uh, to the side of the chest or whatever. Hold, hold whatever the interact button is, uh, interact with it, and there you guys have it. You have the exotic uh, Kvostov 7G08. X is what this one is called. Um, so we still have the legendary. It doesn't, it doesn't convert your legendary one. You still have that one, which is the 7G02. But this one is the 7G OX. So you can see how they kind of compare. If I kind of compare the two side by side, you can see reload speed is significantly higher on the exotic. Uh, stability is uh, a chunk higher. Range, not, not as high actually on that one. Um, and then if we actually go ahead and equip it, it has... Um, it has a couple different things. It has hammer forged rifling. It has alloy magazine, eyes up guardian. So collecting orbs of power strengthens this weapon's next several ricochet shots, providing more damage and more bonuses, uh, bounces between targets. Shoot to loot, um, and then composite stock. So uh, it has the right choice. Every seventh bullet from this weapon deals additional damage and ricochets to nearby targets. So it looks it looks pretty cool. I like the way it looks. Uh, it looks different than the actual uh, purple legendary one. Uh, there's some lore you can read uh, as well. I'll kind of quickly skim through. I think the lore actually is the exact, yeah, the lore is the exact same as the uh, the, the legendary variant. So there you guys have it, the exotic Kvostov uh, 7GOX. That's how you get the legendary, and that's how you then get the exotic variant. I hope this video, guys, helped you guys out. If it did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more. Let me know if you have any questions. Again, hopefully the whole uh, you know bug works for you as well. I want to let you guys know how it updated for me, so maybe that helps, also helps you guys out. Anyways, thanks for watching. Again, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section. Uh, if you found this video useful, leave it a like. If you didn't like it, dislike it. Until the next one, game on. I'll see you guys soon. Hey you! What are you doing? Join the Skeleton Army! Do it today! Don't wait till tomorrow because tomorrow will never come. The Earth is gonna fade, that's inevitable. The next second of your life's not even promised, so you better think about where you're going, and you might as well just join the Skeleton Army. Plus, we do kind of like you a little bit, so it'd be nice to see you around here. But if you don't want to, hey, you're lost. See you later!